a lot of people nowadays are talking about high value men or high value women. And so I decided that I think it would be best for us to make, I prefer the term godly men or godly women. And the reason being is because at the end of the day, you are either following Jesus or you're not. And so I have a few practical items that I want to go over as far as how to vet someone for your life. But then I also have a few more in-depth parts of this conversation that I want to get into as well. But for now, I think the best way to look at someone and this, and look, I'm not a dating coach. I've made that clear before, but I am someone that takes family life and relationships seriously and sincerely in general. And I do think that there's a sacredness to relationships and to family in general that we have to honor, that we have to, and we must understand is not just part of being in life. It's a part of being human. And even though that we as human beings have a lot of different kinds of flaws and a lot of different kinds of places that we want to go and we fall into sin and we all come up short to the glory of God. We also want to make sure that we are doing our best to ensure that the future generations will live with wisdom, with insight, and with a general understanding of the beauty, the good, and the truth that can be as a human being. So the first thing that you want to look for, and this goes for relationships, family, business partners, et cetera, in general, this is, and, and you don't always have to ask these questions right off the bat, but this is something that you want to gauge. Let them talk about their family. Let them talk about how they treat their family, what kind of things they do with their family, how often they see their family, because you'll start to get a indication on, okay, where's my life going to look with this person 10 to 15 years down the line? Because here on this channel, we're not advocating for hookup culture. We're not advocating for this stuff. And for those that are just joining, my name is Thaddeus, and this is the Regal Change YouTube channel. We're not here to promote hookup culture or to promote one night stands or even just if you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend for a few months and then you break up and then you guys already had sex, but then you want to go and you want to get another boyfriend or girlfriend, you want to start having sex with them. Well, let's say you have two boyfriends or two girlfriends a year and by the time you're 25, you've already racked up (laughs) 10 different people. Like that's, that's freaking That's wild. That's wild. So we don't, we don't want to, uh, like promote that kind of stuff. And I'm not trying to shame anybody if they are at that point, but we're here to evolve and we're here to grow and we're here to learn from the mistakes that we've done. So let them talk about their family and see where they, where they stand with their family. Cause there are some outliers that men and women where they had to uh, keep your, their family at arm's length or even no contact altogether. This is where you have to really get into the understanding of what you're dealing with on the other side and understanding that, you know, what is the situation? What is the situation? Because sometimes it can be very complex. Sometimes it can be very... Uh, I don't like the term complicated, but I prefer the, t- the term complex. So then you got to see what their friends are like and what kind of people they hang around. You know, when, they're ang- when they are hanging out with these kinds of people, what are they talking about? What are they saying? When you go out and do different things with this, this kind of person, what are they like? What is their temperament? How do they handle stress? With, with their friends? How do they handle conflict with their friends or their family? Or how do they handle these kinds of more confrontational discussions sometimes? 
that's going to be an in, another indicator on where you're at and where you're going to be going with them. How do they spend their time on the weekends? This is something I learned a long time ago was that how you spend your weekend now is going to determine where you end up 10 to 15 years from now. And the reason that that is, is because when I was in my early twenties, I partied a little bit. I, (laughs) I wouldn't even consider it really partying because even when I did go to the party, I didn't really partake in anything. And there was one time that I did get drunk at a party and it was honestly just not fun. It was just not for me. I really did not like not feeling like I could be who I was or just in in control of myself around a bunch of strangers. I really didn't like that. And so I decided I'm not going to do that. And, you know, what are these kinds of people going to be like 10 to 15 years down the road? Like, are they going to continue this lifestyle? And if they do continue this lifestyle, well, what kind of pattern is that setting for and what kind of tone is that setting for going forward? That's going to be something that you have to look at and what you have to understand. So how do they spend their weekends or how do they handle uh, being emotionally distressed? If they are emotionally distressed, do they go out and buy something to make themselves feel better or distract themselves? Do they have to constantly getting new things in order to feel like they are they're 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 in in the know or they have the status? They have to constantly get the newest item. You know, that's going to be something that you have to understand as well. Like for godly men and godly women out there, what are these kinds of people like when they're in their finances? Do they follow God? How do they follow God? How do, do like what you're asking in these things, like, and what you're trying to really understand is, okay, well, does this person follow God for real or not? Does this person have financial illiteracy? And is this person financially in debt? And is this person going to make my life more challenging because of their spending habits or not? You know, what? What kind of uh, lifestyle are we going to really be setting up based off of these spending habits? How do they treat their friends or family with affection? Do they have affection? Or is it more like an enmeshment? Or is it more like a trauma bond? These are things you're going to have to really look at and understand. And then for men specifically on this, if a woman is willing to do things for you or not, That's going to be another indicator on whether or not she's going to be long-term material or not. I've had women that have faked submissiveness in the past, and they act all submissive and cute. And then the second that I I ask them to help me out with something or like like there was a, a couple times where I was out planting potatoes and there was this girl at my old place that I was at and she was walking by and we kind of like, we didn't really have a thing, but we, we had something, I suppose. Like we never really did anything, but, uh, I asked her like, cause I knew if she was able to help me, you know, depending on her response, like what kind of woman this really is. Cause she had faked submissiveness up until that point, And I couldn't really tell if she was actually being submissive or not. But then as soon as I asked for Haster for help, like planting the potatoes, I said, hey, like if you got a second, like it'd be really great for you to help me help me with the the potatoes here for a second. And she just kind of like looked at me and laughed and said that she had to go get cooking and uh, she had to go do something else. And, you know, that was at least good that she was going to cook, hopefully anyway, but I could tell in that moment, like, even though that she probably was doing something more, like she was doing something on her end, I could tell just by the way that she responded that she actually really didn't want to. She didn't really want to just be there. And so I never talked to her really again after that. And she tried to like place herself in my vicinity and she even knocked on my door a couple times, but 
I just told her that I was working and uh, I just really, I couldn't see, like you can see these kinds of patterns. The more experience you get, you'll start to see that certain things are just not going to add up over time. Like it wasn't a big deal. Like it could have taken like 10 seconds. Like this kind of thing could have took 10 seconds, but no, this is what a lot of men and women nowadays don't understand about relationships. Relationships don't have to be complicated, but they do take work, right? They don't need to be super complex, but they do take effort. You do have to try. You do have to care. <laughs> Otherwise, the relationship isn't really a relationship. So those are just some practical things to, to look out for. Now, as far as the more in-depth side of things, you want to look out for people that are in the new age spirituality. And the reason that that is is because I'm just going to talk plainly here. New Age spirituality is a fantasy. It is not spirituality. Anybody that says, well, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. And I was one of those people for quite a while. Don't listen to them. <laughs> they don't know what spirituality really is. They think spirituality is a fantasy. They think sp and they think that their fantasy is reality. That's the crazy part. That's where you need to really look out for yourself in these kinds of situations. And so there is the possibility that you can work with someone that is spiritual but can be open-minded enough. Because that's another thing. Like personality traits. Is this person industrious? Is this person willing to work? Is this person showing up on time? Is this person consistent? Is this person open-minded? Is this person compassionate? These are the kinds of things you have to look out for. Just These are just like basic level understandings of things. But most importantly, you want to see whether or not they want to win without the struggle. Ladies, if there is a man out there that wants to win but is not willing to struggle and you can support him, like you know that you can support him, but he doesn't really want to struggle. There's nothing you can do about that, ladies. There's nothing you can do about that. And men, it goes the same for women. If you're dealing with a woman that is entitled and she just expects to win because she wants it, <laughs> no, that's not going to work out. It's just not going to work out in the long term. So you've got to be careful with how you're interacting with these kinds of people and how you're interacting with people in general, whether or not you want to invite them into their life, into your life. Does this person run away from pain? Does this person run toward pleasure? If they do run away from pain, what exactly are they really running away from? And if they're running toward pleasure, what are they really trying to get? Are they trying to get just to fill the void? Are they trying to get social status? Are they trying to just get an attention? You know, what are these kinds of people trying to get? And so these are just basic level things that you can learn and vet for people in your life, whether you're male or female. So I hope this message was useful and insightful. And may the grace of Jesus be with us all.